Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can make 3D printed wood parts that are actually made of real wood. And more importantly, these are gonna have the right texture too. A while ago, I made a video where I highlighted Prusa's wood fill filament. And this is Prusa's real wood infused filament that has a high enough percentage of wood where you can sand it, stain it, do whatever you normally would want to do with wood. I learned really quickly though, that if you just print using this filament, you get something that looks light brown and isn't really convincing for a wood product. So to combat that, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to get the parts to actually look like wood, so much so that they fooled people into thinking they're actual wood. So to start, I'm gonna make a simple decorative platform thing. At the base, is supposed to look like wood, so I made a simple design in a program called Blender. It's a free 3D design program. So if you wanna follow along, download the program, come back with the model. Once you know what you want to make look like wood, the first step is giving it a texture, or else it'll just look brown like this. The easiest way to get a texture is just download it from Google. If you search wood texture bump map or displacement map on Google, you'll find it. And I know it looks like it, but it's not just a black and white picture of wood. It's a way to tell Blender how high or low each part of the texture should be. And I chose this one. Now that you have an image, go into Blender, hit the little wrench icon on the right, which is where the modifiers are, go to Deform, hit Displace, and where it says New, just press that and load your white and black bump map image. You'll see that it looks terrible right away, and that's okay. For me, it's because my model is super low resolution. It's just a simple shape, so it has too few vertices or faces to deform into a wood texture. The solution is just add another modifier. This time, go to add modifier, generate, and add a subdivision surface modifier. Just make sure you move it to the top because this is the first modifier you want to affect your model. Once you add a texture and you go up in levels in the subdivision surface, you'll see how it just gets higher resolution. It still looks weird, so we just have to do one more thing, and that's unwrap the model. Hit tab to go into edit mode, and then press U to the unwrap menu, and just hit unwrap. You can mess around with the other settings too, but this is what I'm doing for this model. And this is how you show where the texture should be on the model. And each model is different, but for this one, I just selected kind of face by face or side by side and oriented it how I want. And just so you know, R is rotate, S is scale, G is grab, and use those tools in order to move the vertices and faces around to make the most sense for the model. This is the simplest way I can explain it, but really you can just mess around and not even go into this mode and just try different ways of projecting UVs in this UV menu and hope for the best. Quick tip, make sure the displacement modifier is set to UV and not global or local. This is making sure that the UV map that was created is actually being applied to the displacement modifier. Now it looks way better, but to smooth it out, just right click on the model, hit shade smooth, and there you go. Looks so much better. But I just wanna take a quick second to say how super grateful I am to everybody who watches and subscribes and likes and does all that stuff. I'm at almost 1,500 subscribers and that's insane to me. My goal is to get to 2,000 by the end of the year. So your help getting there would be incredible. That being said, if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe. If you have questions, if anything wasn't clear because this is my first really in-depth tutorial, comment. I will get back to you and I will try to answer your questions the best that I can. All right, time to go back to the model. And it looks good, but I want a bigger texture, so I just made the model smaller. I scaled it down in the UV editor, and I have this. I like it, so now the model's ready for export. Just hit File, Export, and STL, and the only settings you wanna change here are make sure you include selection only is the only thing you're including, uh, and uh, scene units, you wanna click that before you export. And now we're in Bruce's slicer. Just understand the more detailed your model and texture are, the longer it'll take to slice. And if you don't have a fast enough computer, <laughs> mine has kind of bogged down and I've had to restart because of it sometimes. And last note is you have to print so that the layer lines are parallel to the wood grain. Here's an example in real life. For these coasters, it was more wasteful, but necessary to print vertically and use supports because that's the way the wood grain is. 
I did one the wrong way just to show the end results. And you can see it's so much more realistic in the ones where the wood grain is parallel to the layer lines. The only other thing I recommend for this is 0.2 millimeter uh, layer height or larger with a 0.4 or 0.6 nozzle. High flow if it's the 0.4 for the most realistic results. All right, so you've got a model, you've added texture in Blender, printed it correctly. Last step is to stain your model. And I'm not even using real stain, but wood scratch filler I got from Walmart, I think. And I'm assuming it's basically stain, but again, I'm not a pro. So I do a mix of dumping some on the part and spreading it with a paper towel so I can get the most even coat that I can. The final kind of piece to this puzzle is using some of Filla Matrix's marble colored filament to give it some contrast. And while this is the least realistic part of this, it still looks and feels like a normal part, like a thing you'd buy at a store instead of a 3D printed overnight thing that I made. <laughs> but I like how this turned out. Let me know what you think. And again, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.